Yo, what is up, YouTube Nation? It's your boy, The Black Lizard, coming at you with another Sork video for the Apple 4. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about the Blizz Sork. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we updated the build a little bit, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, I don't have a webcam on right now because uh, I'm sick in real life, so I have, you know, snot all over my face. So you guys probably don't want to see that. So uh, hopefully you guys understand. Uh, but anyway, the Blizz Sork. So uh, quickly, I want to talk about what it is and uh, how it works and um, why I'm playing it because I'm getting these questions a lot when I'm streaming. So the Blizz Sork is basically a freeze Sork. Um, the build is based around uh, stacking chill modifiers uh, like this one. And, uh, you know, in the Paragon board uh, in general, just stacking up as much chill as possible and dealing uh, increased damage to vulnerable targets and dealing increased damage to uh, frozen uh, units and uh, chilled units um, and uh, using that shatter passive. So anytime we freeze a target, uh, there are a couple of things that will happen. The target will take damage from uh, being frozen. It will take extra damage from all the modifiers. Uh, we'll have extra crit on that target, and then we'll also proc these ice shards uh, enchantment. So anytime uh, a target is not frozen, our damage is going to be pretty low. But anytime a target does get frozen, our damage is going to be extremely high. Now, this build is really good for clearing from a far distance. It's a very safe build. It's good for pushing high keys. Uh, in general, it offers uh, a playstyle that's not so, you know, melee sork. Uh, like the arc lash for example even ice charges like playing kind of on short range mid range uh, this is something that we, where you can stay just far away and just send blizzards uh, and just stay back you know uh, so i really like that that it offers kind of a different play style uh, to the meta builds right now and i would say that's uh, one of the biggest strengths of the build you have great uh, you know it works really well in basically everything it does everything good um, I like the fact that when you're when I swapped to this build, it had a very kind of linear progression. Uh, I was constantly, you know, knowing what the next thing I would work towards is, and it was really easy to get started. You know, to get started, all you need is this aspect right here, um, dealing more damage to stunned or frozen enemies. And uh, when you freeze an enemy, there's a chance to become vulnerable, and you can literally just go and do two dungeons, and you will get this uh, these two aspects. So really easy to pick these two up. Um, and once you have them, uh, I would say that this is also pretty mandatory. Uh, you restore mana when you crowd control an enemy. Uh, in the start, this is definitely mandatory because uh, you're going to have some mana issues um, if you don't go with this. And uh, later on, you can probably get rid of this and get uh, go for another damage legendary, which is my plan. Uh, I'm still, you know, progging uh, on how I want to do the build. But for legendaries, those are the must-have ones. Um, dealing increased damage to stun frozen enemies. Um, having a chance to make target vulnerables and restoring mana when you freeze an enemy. The rest of the legendaries, pretty straightforward. You don't have to go for these items that I have right now, but uh, right now I'm still looking for better boots. Uh, I want to get a different pair of boots, but I found these. They deal extra damage to chilled units. Why not? It's a little bit of extra damage. Um, I really like these pants as well, but also not a must-have. You can just go with regular pants with like a defensive stat on them really won't make a big difference um i like the ice shard legendary as well um it's also not a must-have but uh, it helps and you can get it again from picking uh, just doing a dungeon so uh just having that uh is really good i do like the teleport chest i was kind of against this but uh this helps you with uh, uh, elite mobs that have the suppression affix because you can just uh, drop a blizzard and then tp on top of them and uh do a big like burst combo basically with nova um, so that's nice. And then on your helm, you can go for a number of different um, defensive legendaries. So as far as legendaries go, I would say the, the ones that you really need is the one on the weapon, the amulet and the ring. Uh, and then the other ones are kind of optional. You can get extra damage uh, when you have a barrier up, extra damage to vulnerable enemies, um, defensive ones. You can go for uniques, uh, whatever, whatever really that you like. Now, in terms of the skill tree. Uh, so before, in my last video, I was playing a lot with Frozen Orb. Uh, I was playing with Frozen Orb enchantment. I was maxing out Frozen Orb as a skill. And I was going for basically uh, uh, the mana restore from Frozen Orb. I feel like this is not really needed. Um, so nowadays, I have gone out of the Frozen Orb. I've put one point in Firebolt. And I've gone with the Firebolt enchantment. 
and I'll explain why in a second. The, the problem with the Firebolt enchantment is that I think Blizzard is actually bugged right now. It doesn't proc uh, direct damage enchantment. It actually doesn't benefit from uh, the chill enchantment either from Frostbolt. So, um, and uh, some people think it's because it's a damage over time effect, but it's not actually a damage over time effect. It is a direct damage uh, ability. A damage over time effect is a dot, you know, like a, um, like a burn, for example. Uh, because uh, if it was a damage over time effect, then, you know, the stat damage over time, I don't have it on anything, but I've tried it and it doesn't benefit Blizzard. So if it was a damage over time effect, then you could stack damage over time effect to get bigger damage on your Blizzard, but you can't do that either. So Blizzard is just bugged right now. Uh, and in general, uh, I've noticed a lot of things, actually. It doesn't uh, it doesn't seem to benefit from uh, when you have a barrier active, you get more chill. It doesn't seem to benefit from any of the chill modifiers. So in general... I think Blizzard is actually just a bugged spell right now, and this build, therefore, is a lot weaker than it should be. With that said, it's still a pretty strong build, so I think if they fix these bugs, Blizzard is going to be even more uh, strong. But anyway, uh, you guys can forget about all of that, um, and we can just uh, talk about the actual build. So the reason why we went for Firebolt Enchantment is because Ice Charge does proc it, so... Um, the way we kill stuff with this build is we drop a blizzard, we drop another blizzard, they get frozen, they take a bunch of damage from the ice charge um, and from the shatter effect and they proc a burn uh, from the uh, firebolt enchantment. And if you have a burn active, you can get this devouring blaze, increases your uh, critical strike damage um, against targets that are immobilized. Uh, which uh, Frost Nova is, uh, you know, immobilized uh, or it's like a root, so... It goes under that category so you get a lot of crit damage uh from that so it just gives you more uh damage when you're freezing stuff really good uh and then the ice shards of course is a must-have um normally when i play this build i don't even have ice shards on my bars uh i usually have ice armor but i've changed some things in my paragon board and i'll explain that in a second as well uh to the point where i don't really feel like i need ice armor so I'm playing with ice shards on my bars. I don't really use it that often. Um, it can be sometimes if there's like one elite left and he's taking, you know, he's, uh, I need to quickly burn his HP a little bit. Or when the boss gets staggered, it can be nice to just send out some ice shards uh, just for extra damage. And I do think eventually when this build is fully perfected with gear, um, like with mana cost reduction neck, mana cost reduction boots, uh, resource uh, generation ring, like if I get two of this ring, for example, <coughs> excuse me um i do think that uh this build will eventually just replace the frostbolt with just ice shards uh as the left click so you'll just blizzard everything and then you'll just ice shard everything that's frozen uh, and i think that's how the build when it's like in the best possible gear that's how it's gonna look um but um anyway let's go through the skill tree uh the rest of the skills so you've gone we've gone through the enchantments Right now, uh, we've maxed Frostbolt, uh, Enhanced Frostbolt, and Glinting Frostbolt. Uh, and in the start, when you don't have the best gear as well, especially, uh, you're just going to be blizzarding. And then when a target gets frozen, you're just going to be Frostbolting it. Um, and it's going to uh, do a lot of damage, actually. It's gonna, your best single target damage is going to be from that. Uh, I've maxed Ice Shards, and then I've gone with the Destructive Ice Shards. Really good way to uh, stack vulnerability, and really just good way to... Um, and make your ice shards uh, enchantment just uh, do more damage and work better basically i'm going with the flame shield the enhanced flame shield shimmering flame shield a bit of extra defense flame shield in general is super good gives you movement speed takes you out of uh, stuns freezes stuff like that so it's a lifesaver uh we've gone with the teleport uh, i haven't picked uh, any of the other teleport modifiers here um because usually uh, you teleport defensively, put down a blizzard, you know, and then you just run back, keep blizzarding, and just run back. That's kind of how the build plays. You frostbolt stuff. Something gets too close, you can know it. It's very traditional kind of mage play style. You're just trying to stay away from targets rather than walking into them. Um, I've gone with the glass cannon, three points. A little bit risky. You can ditch this if you uh, feel like it's too much uh, risk. Uh, completely understandable you know this is not a cookie cutter build that you have to copy paste exactly how it is you can also modify it the way you want you know and that's the beauty of arpgs uh, and then we got frost nova enhanced nova mystical nova and elemental achievement when you crit 
uh, you have a chance to reset one of your defensive skills. It's just good. You're gonna reset your flame shield, gonna reset your Nova, gonna reset your teleport. Give you uh, just more options defensively. Uh, max cold front, max uh, snap freeze, max blizzard, enhanced blizzard, mage blizzard, uh, and then uh, the devouring blaze that I was talking about earlier. Uh, and then you max all of these uh, passives here. More damage, uh, or when you hit vulnerable targets, you get mana back. So anytime you're fighting large packs of mobs, you're just going to be generating infinite mana, basically. Uh, dealing increased damage to vulnerable enemies, dealing increased damage to frozen and chilled enemies, uh, permafrost, dealing more damage to elites. And uh, I have uh, three points from my necklace as well. That's why I have six points. And then the final point is in shatter. Uh, in Paragon, uh, I definitely wouldn't say that this is something that you have to copy, but I'll tell you about the glyphs that I think are the two mandatory ones for sure. Uh, I would say Control is a must-have glyph for basically every single Sorg spec, so just start leveling this glyph and use it. Um, the other glyph that you must have uh, is Imbiber. Uh, this thing scales extremely high. I've just started leveling it, but it's super, super strong. I think it scales to like 140% damage, just flat, so... This gives you a huge damage boost. Uh, and then in terms of legendary node, the one that I would recommend getting is this Icefall node. Extra defense, it stacks as well. So when you kill two enemies, uh, you get a barrier for roughly 1,400 instead of uh, uh, you know 687. And also the duration uh, becomes longer. I don't, I don't think it's exactly twice as long, but it does increase the duration as well. Keeps you uh, uh, for your barrier modifications as well. And the nodes in general, like the elite nodes, are super good here. Damage to chilled enemies, um, damage to chilled enemies, non-physical damage, um, cold damage. You know, it has all the good nodes. So I definitely recommend going for the Icefall. Um, and then on this node, uh, or sorry, on this board, uh, this is the Enchantment Master node. I haven't actually gone on the Enchantment Master, like the legendary node, but the uh, non uh, or the elite nodes are super good as well. So I recommend getting those um as well uh so that's what i've done for paragon that's what i've done for the build and uh the way a bossing works is uh um actually i can just pull up my old video uh real real quick here uh and show you guys from my uh, old video was... oops sorry about that uh let me mute that real quick and uh let me see if i can uh quickly pull that up for you guys so, because I don't want to clear the entire dungeon uh, for you guys to see how bosses work. Um, but basically, this is a, a boss right here. So, um, as you can see here, the boss has uh, his HP bar. And you see this where it says stagger. This is a stagger bar. Anytime you uh, stagger a boss, um, this bar will fill up. And what that means is anytime you try to crowd control a boss... He won't get crowd control, but this will fill up. When this is full, the boss will count as stunned, immobilized, frozen, everything. And all your modifiers will do will work, basically. So uh, everything will do more damage. And with Blizzsork, this stacks up extremely fast. And then once the boss is actually fully staggered, um, that's when you're going to be doing a lot of damage. So when it gets about here, you press Nova. And then this is when the boss is going to get burned and uh, you're going to be able to kill him. So... That's how this build kills bosses. Now, one of the weaknesses of this build is definitely the Butcher. The Butcher, you're not going to have a great time with the Butcher uh, with this build because this build is kind of like a defensive-oriented build. Uh, it's not really made for tanking uh, mobs, and uh, it takes a while to stagger the Butcher. Um, so this right now is a, uh, a 37 key. So the mobs here are... Level 91, uh, and I've been able to do, uh, at level 60, without actually doing the Paragon board, I was able to do a 31 key uh, at level 60. So most people can't even do their capstone at level 60, uh, but this build uh, uh, definitely did a great job with that. So I think for pushing high keys, this build is actually really good. Um, and in general, uh, some of the weaknesses is for sure defensively, uh, it could be a little bit stronger, um, but I'm still trying to figure out, you know, how the build uh, is supposed to be like optimized. 
um, you know, where where it's worth to kind of sacrifice damage for more defense um, and things like that. So uh, it's still a work in progress, but uh, defensively, a little bit too squishy right now, I feel like. Um, but offensively, it's very good. And uh, in terms of play style as well, the fact that you can sit back and uh, you can basically choose, you know, like there I went in and I played kind of aggressively. Like I can just place a blizzard and blink in like this. And that's uh, good to do sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes it's not. <coughs> uh, a lot of the time, uh, you'll be better off um, not doing that, uh, unless you're doing it with Flame Shield as well, which I should have done there. A lot of the time, it's better to just stay back like this, and then just uh, kind of just kick back and spam some Blizzard and just play it safe. Uh, so I like that this build has the option of doing both, and depending on what kind of mob you're fighting as well, um uh it's good to do that kind of play style so sometimes uh it's better to kind of go in and be aggressive sometimes it's better to be defensive uh and i like that you have the, the option to do both uh compared to uh you know a lot of the other sword specs like our clash for example you basically have to be in their face and play aggressive uh otherwise uh you can't do any damage and uh, i also like that the more mobs you're fighting uh, the better this build basically gets because you're stacking up your barrier. Uh, you know, this is from the Icefall Legendary. It just keeps uh, scaling up and barriers are capped at half of your HP. So you basically have a maxed out barrier all the time, um, which is really nice. And, uh, you know, the Shatter um, passive is uh, doing a lot of work as well whenever the, there's monsters stacked up like this. Uh, it's easy to group them. Oh, I didn't actually see. I stood in some kind of explosion there, but with the barriers, uh, not a big deal. And then you also have the option to burst most monsters uh, with ice shards. So uh, in general, this build feels like a very, very well-rounded build. You know, most builds right now, I feel like they don't feel super well-rounded. It's a big reason why I like it. Um, I really like... Um, you know the progression of the build like i said and uh the fact that uh it has a lot of play styles uh you can play it aggressively you can play it defensively uh, and uh you always it, it feels like even now you know uh, when i'm getting a little bit more towards the end game that i still have stuff to work towards uh in terms of items uh it feels like i always have a you know something that i could uh, get that's better for the build so it's just uh, overall a really nice build and it's also nice to not be one of the million eye shard sorks right now uh so yeah this is the uh, bliss sork build uh if you want to try it out um and you like it let me know and uh if you uh, want to modify it as well let me know what kind of modifications you made to it and maybe it's something i can pick up as well uh, thank you guys for watching the video, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm working on a little uh, flamethrower build right now, uh, so maybe I'll make a video on that. Uh, if it ends up being good, we'll see. Uh, but I'm going to keep looking for other builds to try as well, but for now, this is going to be my main build. Uh, anyway, have a good one, boys. Peace.